In a typical research paper that uses multiple regression analysis, we do many different regression models. And the reason for that is that we want to do model comparisons. Now we will take a look at why we compare models and how we do that. In Heckman's paper, which is our example for this video, we will uh, be focusing on their first study. So they say that they used hierarchical moderated regression analysis. So what does that mean? The hierarchical here is the key term. It simply means that you are estimating multiple models. Start with a simple one, then add more variables, compare, add more variables and compare. The moderated part here means that they have interaction terms in their model. They could just as well have said that they use regression analysis because we use regression analysis nearly always in a hierarchical way and it's obvious based on the regression results that they contain interaction terms. So this is uh, a bit uh, unnecessary complicated way of saying we did regression, we estimated multiple models. L now let's look at the actual models and the, and the modeling results and the logic for multiple model comparisons. They say that they entered in the first model, they have the contravariables only here and in the second model they uh, included some of the interesting variables. So we'll be focusing on the first two models, model one and model two. Model one is the control variables only, model two is controls and some interesting variables. The logic in model comparison when we do that kind of comparison is to ask the question, do the interesting variables and the controls together explain the dependent variable more than the controls only? If the control variables and the interesting variables together don't explain the data more than the controls only, then we conclude that the interesting variables are not very useful in explaining the dependent variable and we can conclude that they don't really have an effect. How we do that model comparison is that we compare the R-square statistic. So here they have the adjusted R-square and the actual R-square. The model comparison, if we just want to assess the magnitude, how much better model 2 is, in small samples the more appropriate statistic is the adjusted R-square. However, the adjusted R-square statistic doesn't really have a well-known test. So instead of looking at the adjusted R-square, we test the R-square difference. They present the R-square difference here. So this is the difference between the first model R-square and the second model R-square. And they have some stars here. So the important question is, does the second model explain the data better than the first model? The delta R, the adjusted R-square difference is 4 the uh, actual R-square difference is 7 or 0.07, 7%. So the interesting variables explain the data a bit more than the control variables only. Now we will be focusing on these test statistics here. So where do these stars come from? These stars come from an F-test that tests the null hypothesis that all the regression coefficients for every variable added to this model are zero. We'll look at the, uh, the logic of the test now. So the idea of the F-test between the, the first two models is that it is a nested model comparison test. So one model is nested in another. That means that one model is a special case of another. So in this case, model two is the unrestricted model or unconstrained model. Model one is the restricted model or constrained model. So why can we say that model one is a special case of more general model model two? The reason is that model one, which leaves out these variables, is the uh, same model as model two, except that the effects of these variables are constrained to be zero. So by leaving out variables, we constrain the recursion coefficient of that variable to be, variable to be zero. And that's the reason why we say that these uh, this model is a constrained version of that model. Here, the effects of the last three variables are freely estimated. Here, they are constrained to be zero. So how do we test these differences? Whether the difference in R-square is more than what we can expect by chance only. Remember that every time we add something to the model, the R-square can only go up. It can stay the same or go up. Typically, it goes up. So is that increase in R-square statistically significant. To answer that question, we do the t-test. And let's do the t-test by hand now. We need to first have the decrease of freedom for the first two models to uh, do the f-test. The decrease of freedom for regression model is n, the sample size, minus k, 
the number of uh, estimated parameters or regression coefficients or number of variables in the model minus one for the intercept. So we estimate we have sample that provides us 113 units of information. We estimate for the first model effects of 15 variables. We estimate the intercept. So we have uh, 97 degrees of freedom remaining for the restricted model. In the unrestricted model we estimate three more things. So it's 113 minus 18 minus 1 is 94 degrees of freedom for that model. So these degrees of freedom calculations are pretty simple. It's just basic subtraction. Now we need to have a test statistic as well. And the F statistic can be uh, defined based on the R square values. So it's the R square difference divided by the degrees of freedom difference divided by, by that thing there. So that's the F statistic. Your uh, econometrics textbook will explain where that comes from. But importantly, we are here interested in uh, how much the R square increases per the degrees of freedom consumed uh, when we estimate the model. Quite often we, uh, we compare increased explanation against increased complexity. That's a fairly general comparison which we use in, in multiple different tests. So we, we do that, we plug in the numbers we get the result of 3.22. We compare that against the proper F distribution. We get a p value of 0.026, which has one significant star. So uh, they present two stars. The reason I have no idea, but uh, I've done this example uh, in multiple classes over multiple years, and I, I don't know why, why this is different. It could be that there's a typo in the paper, or it could be but it, that's probably the case because uh, this kind of difference getting that because of a uh, rounding error in the R square is quite unlikely. So that's the idea of F-test. You take a, a constraint model and you take an unconstrained model. You calculate the difference per the uh, degrees of freedom difference. You scale it with this thing and then uh, you will get a test statistic that you compare against f distributions. In more complicated models that we, for which we don't know how they behave in small samples, we use the chi-square distribution instead of the F distribution. But the principle is the same. In practice, your software will do the calculation for you. But it is useful to understand that these uh, calculations are not complicated. And I'll have a, a little bit of understanding of the logic behind the calculation.